you know, Monty, uh, uh, any, any thoughts on your steroid use in these patients? Do you use steroids the same way when you're dealing with an I, immune-related AE for, say, you know, ipinevo versus an immune-related AE for, say, Pembro, Exitinib? Is there any difference in how you use the steroids in those different scenarios and, and discontinuing and sort of restarting drug in those scenarios? Yeah, I mean, I, I wish I could give you something very nuanced in terms of differences in management. I, I do find that, you know, I am quite similar in my strategy for both, you know, we'll start with volumedrol and make the pig, you know, or prednisone, pig in the context of, uh, you know, some of the GI or uh, liver-based drugs. Um, but perhaps in the context of people, it, I'm, uh, I'm a little bit more liberal in jumping to the second therapy uh, just because I've all seen, you know, where significant you know. I think that's fair. I mean, I, I, I feel the same way that, you know, the combination of IO, IO, you can't reverse that. You know, we can, you know, with the IO TKI, we're going to hold the TKI. It's going to wash out and they take a few days and they take a week, but it's, it's going to wash out. You know, with the IOs, they're not necessarily going to wash out. A lot of these toxicities don't happen with, sometimes they happen with the very first dose, but more often it's with that second or third cycle. So you've kind of loaded them up and that's going to take a while. And so I think about treating with steroids a little bit longer in those courses. And I think about, you know, just what you said, moving on to that second line agent a little bit sooner if we're not seeing the results. And, and, and those drugs work so much better if we do them earlier rather than later. So you know, I, um, you know, I, I, I think that's, that's really helpful advice. And then finally, I guess, are, are there patients that you would look at up front and, and, and just say, this really not an IO candidate? I mean, is there, is there criteria? You mentioned some of the, you know, some of the things in the past that excluded them from trials, like these, uh, these autoimmune conditions, but are there, are there other factors, other, other things you're concerned about with, with IO therapy that, that you, you would hesitate to, and, and consider using more Kind of straight TKIs. Yeah, I, I think Raina and Niraj had sort of alluded to this, but you know, when when you have that sense, you know, that your self patient is not going to be very compliant. Um, say, for instance, that patient that you know had their nephrectomy at your institution ten years ago, and then never went for a single follow up scan, and shows up, you know, a decade later with extensive metastases. Right. Yeah. Um, and that, that's the sort of individual um, where may bulk a little bit at all. I, I think that you really have to have uh, a certain level of trust between physician and patient uh, to a bio-based therapy. I, th I think that's exactly right. And, you know, it's challenging because you're just getting to know these patients, right? They're new, new patients to us and making a lot of really important decisions up front and trying to get a sense of this. I, I think this is, uh, th this is a, really important, a, a really important aspect to this. 